the trip that changed everything. Yo, what's going on? It's so nice, no one, and welcome to the second episode for the Orient Week. This report was sent in by Tillman, the drugs used, Bergmancia, at a dose of three and a half red belt trumpets, the route administration, T for Bergmancia, and snorted for the Adderall, gender, male, weight, 90 kilograms, age, 17, height, 185 centimeters, for his prior experience, we'll just say psychonaut, and the setting, at a friend's house. Okay, so now we're in it. Welcome to the second episode for Delirium Week this year. We're dropping a long banger here to really get things going. This is by far one of the most crazy, gone wrong delirium experiences I've heard yet. And what else are you going to expect from the tropane alkaloids? Not only that, but Bergmancia with Adderall. Two dehydrating substances which are both hard on the heart. But this user and a troop of his friends have been doing all sorts of strong doses, strong combinations, and whatnot before. Namely, doses of acid that would be 10 taps plus, or like a ketamine, mushroom, and LSA mix. To say the least, they were exploring far together as a group, the deepest ends of their consciousnesses. And eventually, they came to Bergmancia. They figured with all that experience, they were ready for it. But you'll just see what happens. This experience is somewhat dated, and in result, none of them thought to use the internet, because it wasn't that widespread at the time. So further research, they mainly go by word of mouth and get some varied advice. And some of this advice is that amphetamine can make it a better trip. And that's probably one of the last things you'd want to ever mix it with. But this is a wild report, and they all suffer from short and long-term consequences from it. I'll just let it speak for itself. Again, welcome to the Lyrian Week. So without further ado, let's dive right into this. Important note. I will state the dosage used, as I think it should be with experience reports. If you do get stupid thoughts, I ask you to give it another go, very thoroughly. I would shoot myself without hesitation for a second, instead of drinking the tea again. This is not a saying, but I really mean it. And important note, to my person, at that time I weighed about 90 kilograms on 185 centimeters and at the tender age of 17, I was by far the youngest in the group of a total 6 suicidals. I've got used to that term since then. Mentally everything was great for me, absolutely no problems, stress, or worries. I also managed to graduate with straight A's in school for the first time, which I really wanted to celebrate with something very special. It was a moment in my life where everything just seemed to go perfectly, which in my opinion is the basic requirement to come back from such a trip in one piece. At the time, me and my friends were just very curious and decided to have as much fun with drugs, that includes with control, winky face, as possible, and we wanted to try every drug at least once if possible. As a result, we were ultimately quite experienced with drugs. As such, experiments had to be well planned and considered. We weren't afraid of a shot of heroin and crystal, but we were very afraid of addiction and concentrated on other substances, mostly psychedelics. But then we really let it escalate and always push the limits to the full. In addition to cocktails made from ketamine, mushrooms, and LSA, really blatant effect if you can't throw up from them, there were also excessive doses of liquid LSD, which were in the around 1500 microgram range at our peak. Indescribable, you are nobody anymore, but simply free. Color. Since you don't even try such experiments, of course it dragged on for years, which slowly made us very familiar with psychedelics. At least that's what we believed. Annotation. I know very well that our drug use was absolutely excessive, and you can sometimes believe that I'm just telling shit. Actually, I didn't want to give any details about our consumer behavior. Not because of me, someone who is now trying to get rid of his body with LSD. But I think in this way, the image of people who engage in angel trumpets is simply perfectly rounded and perhaps serves as a deterrent. At that time, with the sometimes therapeutic and therefore extremely dangerous doses of LSD, we got to know the deepest, and by that, I really mean the deepest, abysses of ourselves, and yet we were caught freezing by the angel's trumpets. Preparation by the way, that story was quite a while ago, on 33 today, 
Winky Face. As a result, none of us need the internet and cannot find anything about the dosage and, above all, the dangers. Instead, we studied books and asked around in our circle of acquaintances, hoping that an acquaintance of an acquaintance might know something about it. In the end, we were able to collect a lot of information, including some information on the dosage and the claim that Red Angel trumpets are on the one hand stronger, and on the other hand, they cause fewer blackouts than the yellow ones. In addition, there is the tip that consumed with amphetamines, the blackouts are even lower, and you have fewer physical side effects. We just accepted that we couldn't check any of it anyways, and determined a dosage for ourselves. Whereby the word determined is absolutely ridiculous. In the end, we just guessed, and as I know exactly today, only barely escaped death. We also decided on a day where we would start on a Thursday, as Friday was a public holiday, and we therefore had enough buffer for the, as we believed, maximum of three days of effect. Here, we had chosen the apartment of a certain friend, because we would not be disturbed there, and if necessary, we could also go to a meadow, or into the forest if we felt like it. Music, films, food, picnic equipment, the finest speed slash amphetamine we can get, even pee buckets, and a lot more was organized beforehand. Then, there was also a friend of a friend who was supposed to take care of us. She was, slash is a nurse, and has taken care of us very often. So, she was extremely experienced, and had seen everything. Although, she never did drugs herself. But since it was new territory for us, and we had very little information about the effect, we added another buddy to watch out. Two trip sitters for six people out of control is far too few. I can guarantee you that. The search for the angels' trumpets then got tight. The day X was firmly selected and cannot simply be postponed, so we drove through the area for days until we finally found her. Somehow, that turned out to be more difficult than expected, especially when you are looking for the red ones and need a sufficient amount for six people. Damn, when I look at the written text, I can tell that I'm extremely dissolute. I will try to describe this part as accurately and as truthfully, even if it's not really easy. You know for yourself that it is very difficult to find the right words for a trip, and that story was a long time ago. To top it off, there are heavy blackouts, which means that I can no longer remember a lot, which to be honest, was not that bad at all. So I will also rely on what I was told afterwards from our trip sitters, doctors, and the police. Day X I was the first in the apartment because I was on vacation and the others still had to work. My colleague had prepared everything and also mixed some speed and some drinks, which would be then be given to us by the trip sitters if we were not able to snort a line. Then, he stole the angel's trumpets from a grandma's garden and put them in the fridge for me so I could start cooking right away. As agreed by us, I calculated 3.5 red bells, seed pods, flowers, and leaves together per person. So I took 21 fresh bells, chopped them up slightly, and threw them into a pot with about 3 liters of water to boil. I wasn't sure if that was enough, so I let it cool a few times and boil it again so that the active ingredient is transferred correctly, and so that it's not destroyed by heat. After the tea was ready, I let it cool down, filtered it, and poured some sugar into it, because the tea smelled very abnormal and immediately made you gag. The sugar brought only a minimal improvement. We actually felt safe with the dosage. We heard from people who took six per person, and the trip went perfectly. We did speak with an individual who was sick as hell after one bell, but what could go wrong? We thought. We were already so far that we didn't even think of LSD with less than 10 tabs per person. I think I even would have said that back then. Give me a time machine, and I'll punch my face for it like I've never seen it before. Everyone else was there by now. We divided the tea by six and drank it on an empty stomach, with our noses blocked. The taste was just disgusting. Until today, more than ten years later, I can't drink tea without having the taste back in my mouth immediately. My brain just won't forgive me. Then we started to slowly pull the speed in very small lines until a proper flash was built up. By the way, I can't say whether and how exactly the trip was influenced by the speed. About an hour after drinking, we had an incredibly dry mouth. Even after taking a sip, your mouth and throat were dry again within seconds. We also noticed that our pupils were slowly getting bigger. 
After about two hours from the start of drinking, the effects probably started to slowly pick up speed. My pupils were so extremely large that I was a bit scared. Nothing but black, like being a demon. The extreme thirst was still there, but the whole body, especially the face, tingled so extremely that we simply forgot the thirst. Over time, the tingling became sometimes very uncomfortable, because it felt like if the limbs had been pinched off for a long time. So, already from this point on, I could no longer give any time information. We just lost track of time, and the trip sitters were focused on us, so they couldn't say anything about it. We suspect that the peak came on after 4-5 to five hours. At least from then on, the hallucinations were fully there. We just didn't know it. By the way, we're not talking about LSD-like effects, but about correct and absolutely blatant hallucinations, where you don't have the slightest chance to differentiate between imagination and reality. A few friends came to visit because they were interested in the effect. We chain-smoked one cigarette after another, talking to them. According to the trip sitters, some had their cigarette out and they drew on it anyway, while others had nothing in their hands, but always led them towards their mouths. But the best thing was that we never had anyone over. We all imagined the conversation, each for himself. Today we know that we have imagined different people, siblings, work colleagues, etc. in different numbers. So we play perfectly together. So that six of us had an almost identical hallucination at the same time and had a conversation that actually made no sense to us. The trip sitters wanted to be on the safe side and began to explain the facts to us so that we could understand that a lot was already not real, and that we can get things under better control. The only problem was that none of us reacted to it, as we somehow only paid attention to one another and couldn't talk to anyone else, except the imaginary people. After drinking, the trip sitters weren't present in any of my memories, but apparently no one was surprised that they were simply gone. During this period of time, I remember many other logical things. For example, that I kept dropping my cigarette, which was no longer there, when I picked it up, or dirt on my clothes, which was completely gone after wiping over it, or that I drank and swallowed from a bottle where the lid was still on after removing it. There were quite a few such little things. Still, I think at absolutely no time did I notice that it was a hallucination or would have suspected it. On the other hand, I was just, with a slightly muddy slash blown head, most likely like on too much weed, in a completely different world. In this world, I was no longer aware that I had taken heavy drugs and that everything was so different as a result of that. So you are somehow mentally limited and can no longer properly be aware of the effects. Well, this apparently dragged on for a while. I don't know for sure, since I already had blackouts. But at some point, it was probably very quiet around us, so that the trip sitters could take turns to sleep for a little. We were on the other hand lively, because of the speed maybe, but completely withdrawn and lost in thought. However, we were always able to take a bottle on our own and drink it when necessary, but none of us can remember it. For the trip sitters, however, everything seemed to be normal and calm. So from that point on, the situation escalated incredibly quick. Bad trip. It was already Friday and deep into the night, so one day was completely wiped out for me. When a trip sitter noticed that one of my colleagues hadn't had a drink for hours, he was worried and really just wanted to help him. So he got involved in the trip for the first time. It's set at the very beginning. I don't know how it would have gone if he hadn't done anything. He might think everything would have gone well, but I think the poison would have slowly destroyed our bodies. He tried to convince him that he should have a drink, but he didn't react a bit. So he woke up the nurse so that he could have support. She tried the same thing but there was absolutely no response from him. Somehow she touched him and noticed that he felt extremely hot and said to the other sitter that they had to call a doctor immediately because his body temperature was well over 40 degrees Celsius and he seemed to be burning. The moment she said the words, burn up, my colleague jumped up and screamed that it was terribly hot, that he was on fire right now and doesn't want to die. I guess that screaming woke us all up in that moment. At least we can all remember that moment. One of them just didn't stop screaming and started taking his clothes off because he was so hot. Then, now completely naked, he took a bottle from the table and tipped it over himself to probably extinguish himself. Then he tried to escape outside because it was cooler there. The guards immediately grabbed him and locked him up 
so that he could no longer move. He always screamed like, I can't get out of here, and that's why I'm going to burn. That triggered the next buddy to have a panic attack. He was afraid that he would not be able to leave the apartment like the first and tried to open the locked door. When that didn't work, he ran into a corner of the room, took a very hard run, and jumped with full force against the door and then lay in front of it. He had broken his shoulder and began to scream in pain, or rather whine. Both trip sitters were in total panic and completely overwhelmed. The guy wanted to calm things down and made the most fatal mistake. He dragged the one, who appeared to be burned, into the laundry room by the foot and locked him in there. He wanted to make sure that he didn't get injured while running away, and also wanted to put him out of action. Since I and three others were in the room, and there were only two of them, he and a 45 kilogram nurse. Just try to imagine what it looked like for us, because as I said before, none of us could hear or see the two trip sitters. Because of this, and because of the drug itself, my image of this action became absolutely horrifying. I could see someone screaming and being pulled back into the dark room by some kind of magic. Then, the door closed by itself, and we heard knocking and screaming that he couldn't see anything and couldn't get out. Not to forget, of course, that it still burns and he will die in the same way. I immediately got an unimaginably terrible feeling. Many memories came up from my life and I saw each of them totally negative and black. I had the feeling that everything I had ever done, seen, or experienced was just bad. I knew there couldn't be anything worse than that. So it would be better for me to just die, which I was waiting for. But then I realized that I couldn't die and I had to stay that way forever, which made it even worse. You just can't put this moment into words. I think you have to experience it to understand it. However, I wouldn't wish that to anyone. Dude, I wouldn't even do that to Hitler. That probably only lasted a few seconds. To me, it seemed as if it had always been that way, because everything in my past was bad, black, and negative. I knew exactly that it's not real. But now that I think about it again, I have every single and even the smallest detail in my head. Also, consider how long it was. This feeling stopped when someone else jumped up and interrupted my thoughts. He wanted to prevent himself from being dragged into this dark room and then also saw someone lying badly injured in front of the door whining that we would never come out again. According to reports, the sitter grabbed his arm immediately. We didn't see her, but my colleague grabbed a bottle from the table and waved it around in panic. It hit the sitter in the head, causing him to be dazed for a while because the bottle was made of glass. Really very stupid to have glass bottles at the start of such a journey, although if we look at the rest, it fits perfectly. My colleague then went back a little, took the sofa as a staircase, and jumped through the window. It was very lucky for him that we were on the first floor. He stayed in the bushes in front of the window, but had many and some very deep cuts through the glass and lost a lot of blood. A jump like that just doesn't go like it does in the movies, believe me. For me and the other two, the jump was rather suboptimal because we immediately used the window to escape. The nurse immediately called the ambulance and the police so they could find us. From then on, my memory became very sketchy again. I still know that I was panicking about something. I didn't know what it was, but still, I ran for my life. I fell on my face a few times, I can still remember that, but apart from the falls, the race, and the incredible fear, I know absolutely nothing anymore. I was found shivering in a meadow by the police station an hour after jumping out the window. Another ran into the street and was hit by a car. They found the third one after four and a half hours, sitting quietly on a bench. We don't know anything about it anymore. For me, the memory doesn't start again until Sunday morning on the intensive care station at the hospital. This time, more than a whole day was gone, but it also was the last blackout. In the hospital, we were given an antidote and other medication, but this did not make the effects go away. I continued to feel very drowsy and had hallucinations until Tuesday lunchtime. Especially when I was in the hospital, I kept giving myself a cigarette. The resume, sorted by me subjectively, according to severity. Me. For me, every T, also, for example, iced tea, if I know that it is tea, tastes like angel trumpets. I'm the only one who feels that way, and the psychologist at the time called it a temporary trauma. 
I didn't care anymore because I never liked tea and never had any tea. I remember the fear and that something was haunting me. In addition to this, I had an absolutely bad and negative feeling. Since I know for sure that none of it was real, I did not suffer any psychological problems, and I was never in therapy. Oh yes, I had a broken nose, which probably happened when I fell while running away. Colleague 1. It was him who was fine on the bench. He needs glasses since that day, became extremely nearsighted, and can remember several bad things. But he gets along very well with that, doesn't need a psychologist, and has never been in therapy. He is the only one I still have fleeting contact with, and know that he is doing very well. Colleague 2. He was the third who escaped out the window with me. He can remember several bad things. He's now coping with that very well, but had to be treated for a long time. In addition, he was hit by a car while fleeing when he ran across the street and broke his knee. Haven't been in contact for a few years. Recently, he was feeling very good mentally, although he reported chronic pain in his knee. Colleague 3. The one who tried to break the door open with his shoulder can remember several nasty things. He coped with this for a while, after a long period of treatment. As I said, he broke his shoulder from the force, but it healed without any problems. Haven't been in contact for a few years. I know he was undergoing treatment again, and when we last met, he acted kind of strangely and seemed kind of jumpy. According to him, he has been doing fine for a while. He just somehow got problems with his pupils and can therefore see very poorly in the dark. Colleague 4. Jumped through the window and left some scars. One of them in the middle of the face. I only had contact with him for a short time after that. He got extreme problems with his eyes. Had extreme anxiety, especially in the dark. And was a completely different person to me. Already in the hospital, when we were feeling better, there was somehow nothing left of him. Also, colleague 1 said that he probably never returned. A few months later, I learned from a relative that he was blind in one eye and that one of his heart valves was no longer closing properly. According to doctors, it is caused most likely by the poison. He was significantly smaller and lighter than the rest of us, but had insisted on the same amount of tea for everyone. Colleague 5 the one who believed he was being burned and was dragged into a dark room and locked up. His parents blamed me for everything and never told me how he was doing. The others didn't even ask. Since the six of us were the best colleagues at the time and I was extremely worried, I tried hard to find out something. Because of the confidentiality obligation, this is hardly possible. I only found out that shortly after we were admitted, when we were still in the blackout, he was transferred directly to another clinic. He was directly briefed into a psychiatric clinic for an unknown time span. I couldn't find out more. This is my story. You can see that we were all really badly hit. A couple of us were just a little more lucky than the others who completely crashed. I actually got better again pretty quickly, so that after a long time, I was even able to laugh again. I've studied, found a good job, got married, and am aiming for a family after my house is finished next year. However, you have probably noticed that the smileys are less at the end. The feelings from back then were just too blatant and often present, which I have already described. Unfortunately, there is also something very current. I notice that I always see bad things in the dark. My wife says that my pupils are somehow larger than usual. I already have an appointment with a specialist. Let's see what comes out. Unfortunately, hardly anyone heard of our experience at the time as nobody wants to hear such stories, and it did not become public. I hope, however, that I have been able to catch up on this with this report, and that it remains online as a warning to others. Furthermore, I switch back to the read-only mode, and will definitely not teach anyone more. If this report is not enough for you, and you want to test lower doses, then it's up to you. But, please don't run in front of my car one day. Drug use after, of course. Everyone immediately advised me against any consumption, but I knew exactly what drugs I can still afford from this point on. Logically, psychedelics are no longer one of them. The danger is too great that memories, I am thinking in particular of what was forgotten from the blackout phases or even a flashback, could come back. That's why I would be afraid of going on another trip, which is a bad start for psychedelics. Although I don't really like them and used to take them more often, for the purpose of mixed consumption. 
Today, I rarely allow myself a little weed, plus MDMA, but I don't dare to get any closer to my psyche. Oh man, you don't believe how much I miss the LSD. But maybe at some point, if it should become legal, I'll have a psychologist repair my brain with it. That's the end of my story. I hope you liked it.